Who moved King David to conduct a census? Ben? God did. Yes, that's correct. And Joe? Uh, Satan did. Well, predictably, you're both correct again, so 10 points each. And at the end of that round, we've got Ben in the lead, which means, Ben, you get to choose the topic for our next round of questions. Tonight, you can choose from Jesus' words. Which ones do you really mean? Slavery, abolish or regulate? Hitler, the atheist? Or the horrors that await our unsaved loved ones? Ben, what'll it be? Hitler, the atheist sounds pretty easy since he indisputably was, so I think I'll go with that. Okay, Hitler it is. A round of questions on the 20th century's leading atheist. Okay, first up, we have three quotes from Adolf Hitler, and you need to tell us the words that have been blanked out from each one. Take a look at your monitors and complete this quote. I am now, as before, a what, and will always remain so. Ben? Atheist! Oh, sorry, good answer, but not the one we're looking for. Joe, do you want to have a try? Non-believer? Mm, again, you're both correct, of course, but the actual answer is Catholic. Number two. According to atheist Adolf Hitler, what gave men their form, their essence, and their abilities? Ben? Blind chance acting upon primordial soup? Correct, but that's just not... Yes, Joe? A hurricane ripping through a junkyard? Mmm, two excellent answers, but the exact wording we're looking for was God's will. Last quote. I believe today that my conduct is in accordance with the will of what? Joe? Um, meaningless chemical reactions occurring in my brain? Mm, no, sorry, a good answer, but yes, Ben? Mm, is it my ancestral monkey heritage? Oh, look, once again, both technically correct in that that's what he undoubtedly believed, but the quote actually contains the words, the almighty creator. Okay, neither player doing so well there, but let's go on to our next round of questions, which are all multiple choice. First to buzz in after I read all the possible answers. Number one. What atheistic slogan did Hitler have written on the belt buckles of his soldiers' uniforms? A. God is dead. B. God doesn't exist. C. We hate God. Or D. God with us. Yes, Joe? I think it was A and B and C, wasn't it? No, apparently that's what he wanted, but the buckles weren't quite big enough to fit all of that, so he just went with D. God with us. Next. What kind of special favours did Hitler do for the German Freethinkers League, which was Germany's largest atheistic association? Did he A. Give it massive taxation concessions? B. Invite its leaders to join his cabinet, or C, outlaw the organization. Yes, Joe? Is this the same Adolf Hitler who pledged never to tie himself to organizations that wanted to destroy Christianity? Yes. Well, C, he outlawed the Freethinkers League. That's right, and he allowed its meeting hall to be converted into a Christian church outreach center. Next question. Some have speculated that there were actually several things in which Hitler did not believe. Which of the following things that Hitler didn't believe in motivated him to instigate and carry out militaristic, fascist, expansionist, populist and collectivist nationalist totalitarian policies? Was it his disbelief in the Loch Ness Monster, New Zealand Maori deity Papatuanuku, unicorns, Atlantis, Poseidon god of the ocean, alien settlements on the far side of the moon, Bigfoot, UFOs, leprechauns, pots of gold at the end of rainbows, the 2012 prophecy, Yowies, Yips, ghosts, the afterlife, Korean deity Cheng Huang, alien involvement in crop circles, Zeus, the magic sandwich that cures cancer, the magic sandwich! Mm, sorry, you buzzed in a little early there, because a disbelief in that or any of those other things that I've read out so far doesn't logically lead to carry out genocide. Oh. Hmm. Do you want to hear the rest of the possible options? Yet to come was Jedi abilities, kryptonite, telepathy, Yahweh, the Iron Age God who manifested physically as his own child and sacrificed himself unto himself so that the world could be rescued from an eternal curse that had come into effect when a woman made out of a rib was convinced by a talking snake to eat from a magical tree, or lastly, homeopathy. Ah, oh, damn it, I should have waited. Hmm, Joe, would you have gotten that one? Yeah, it's Yahweh. Exactly the same disbelief that compelled Stalin to wipe out private enterprise and free trade, and instead pursue centralized distribution in the coercive requisition of agricultural production. Exactly, the inevitable result of atheists getting into power. Okay, so not much changed so far, but it's early days yet. Stick around, we've got lots more questions to come after this short break. Hitler. 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 Adolf Hitler. Stalin. Mao. Stalin. Hitler. Stalin. Adolf Hitler. Mao and Pol Pot. They're all atheists. All confirmed atheists. Have you read Mein Kampf? Governments that have atheist points of view. In the name of atheism. Hmm, actually a few hints there amongst those messages that might come in handy for these next questions about the Catholic Church's strong opposition to Hitler's atheistic regime. In fact, only recently Pope Benedict warned us of the dangers of aggressive secularism in the modern world. In the 1930s, when the Catholic Church noticed that Adolf Hitler's atheistic regime was aggressively pursuing an atheistic agenda, how did it respond? Joe? By officially celebrating Hitler's birthday? Correct. The Church sent their warmest congratulations to the Fuhrer in the name of the bishops and dioceses in Germany. Question 2. When did the Catholic Church excommunicate Hitler? Ben? When he first began killing all of those innocent people in the name of atheism? Sorry, the answer is never. 
After all, excommunication is only carried out for the very worst crimes, such as trying to have a woman ordained, or reporting a pedophile priest, or organising an abortion for your nine-year-old daughter pregnant with twins due to having been raped by her stepfather. Yeah, fair enough. Question 3. In 1933, soon-to-be Pope Pius XII drew up a concordat with Adolf Hitler. What was the main effect of this agreement upon Hitler's evil atheistic plans? Yes, Ben? Well, the concordat with the Church assisted Hitler by giving him international credibility and by largely silencing the many German Catholics that had up till that point been opposing Nazism. Very good answer. You've obviously studied up on the Catholic Church's fine track record of identifying and standing up to aggressive atheism. Okay, a couple of general questions now about Hitler's atheism. In hindsight, what is the main giveaway that Hitler's regime was atheistic and was acting in the name of atheism? Joe? Well, there was just too much reason, scepticism and critical thinking going on under the Nazis. Yes, that's correct, Joe. It's the same problem that developed under the communists in Russia. But there's more. Ben, can you add anything to this? Yes, well, just like we see today in North Korea, the Nazis encouraged people to think for themselves and demand evidence before accepting extreme claims and worldviews. Yes, a very good answer there from each of our players, reminding us what happens when the central tenets of atheism are allowed to influence politics. Next. Now, some people have suggested... <laughs> Actually, I'm going to have trouble keeping a straight face while I read this question. <laughs> Some people have actually suggested that Adolf Hitler was not, in fact, an atheist. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but wait, wait. Some have actually gone as far as to suggest that not only was he not an atheist, but that he actually believed in God. <laughs> Hitler believed in God. <laughs> as if Hitler believed in God. <laughs> Oh, they think they can just make up facts to suit themselves. <laughs> How could Hitler have believed in a god? Sorry, guys. Okay. Now the question. Okay, now the question is, how would you respond to someone making the claim that Hitler believed in God? Ben? No, he didn't. Whoa, an excellent answer there. Very comprehensive and taking into account all of the historical evidence. 50 points for you. And how about you, Joe? What's your response? Well, he didn't really believe in God. Oh, I think that's even better than Ben's answer. 80 points for you, I think. As we go into another break... And we'll be right back with more questions about what Hitler did in the name of atheism. In the name, in the name of atheism. Hitler, Stalin, and Mao were all driven by a radical atheism. Atheistic regimes. Hitler, Hitler, because he always identified religion as his greatest enemy. Hated Christianity. He was not a religious believer. Avid atheist. Hitler, Hitler. In the name of atheism. Amen. Next question. In 1941, Hitler said... The heaviest blow that ever struck humanity was the coming of Christianity. He also compared Christianity to disease and drugs. For 10 points, why are modern-day atheists so afraid to acknowledge that Hitler said these things? Ben? Because quotes like that are all that are required to prove that he didn't believe in any kind of higher power and that he carried out his evil acts primarily because he was an atheist. Yes, indeed. Atheists are petrified of the ramifications of such quotes. Take a look at your monitors once again for this one. Here we have several murderous warlords from throughout history, how many people they killed, and the kinds of weapons that they used. Compare them with Adolf Hitler, who killed upwards of 10 million people with these weapons. Why is it that Hitler killed far more people than any of the genocidal mass murderers that we read about in the Bible? Joe? Because he was an atheist. Correct, and that is indeed the only reason. And question two, following on from that, if any of the biblical warlords had had access to 20th century warfare technology, would they have killed as many as Hitler, Stalin or Mao? Joe, again. Well, we're told that they were righteous men, so presumably if God had ordered them to kill upwards of 10 million people and granted them the means to do so, they would have obeyed that holy order. That's correct, and it would have been morally okay for them to have killed as many people as the 20th century killers. That's for sure. Next, our final question for this roundabout Hitler. Hitler's dogmatic acceptance of a particular scientific theory played a central role in his politics and evil actions. Can you name the scientific theory that Hitler held to and which directly led him to kill so many millions of people? Yes, Ben. 
uh, the theory of evolution. No, sorry. I said scientific theory. And evolution is not a science. It's a myth. Oh, of mm. course. Yeah, sorry. A bit of a tricky question here. Joe, do you want to have a try at this? Mm, sorry. The theory? I don't know. Okay. I wonder if anyone in our audience or at home got that one. Hitler's Air Force dropped a lot of bombs on his enemy's cities, drawing upon gravitational theory. Oh. Mm. Yes, which demonstrates that there is a direct link between Isaac Newton's so-called theories and Nazi atrocities. Okay, and that's the end of our round of questions on Hitler. Stay with us. After the break, we'll start a new round of questions about what a biological kind actually is. <laughs> Be sure to stick around for an entire round of questions that neither contestant will want to attempt to answer. <laughs> 